What's going on everybody? I'm Johnny Brook. Welcome back to another Crafted Workshop video. In this week's video, I'm going to be building this hand tool tote. So last week, in case you didn't see on my social media, I attended a woodworking class at the John C. Campbell Folk School, and I needed a way to bring some of my hand tools with me to the class. So I also wanted to get a little more hand tool experience before the class because I knew we'd be using some hand tools as part of the build. So this was a great project for me to both practice my skills as well as be able to kind of transport my hand tools nicely. It holds a surprising amount of tools. It's actually pretty dang heavy, but it turned out really, really nice. So let's get started. I started this project by digging through my scrap pile and found a piece of maple and walnut to use for the sides of the tool tote. I milled these pieces square on the joiner, planer, and table saw. And then resawed the walnut on the bandsaw. The final thickness of my sides were roughly 3 eighths of an inch, which is actually a bit thinner than I think is ideal. Next, I roughly drew the shape I wanted for the tall sides of the tool tote, and then cut all the pieces to length at the miter saw. With all the pieces to their final size, it was time to lay out the dovetails. So I started by setting the depth of my marking gauge to match the sides, and then I transferred this line to the ends of the walnut boards. I also traced the line with pencil to make it a little more visible. To set the width of my dovetails, I used a divider and just walked it across the end of the piece until I got a nice even spacing. So I'm using the David Barron dovetail guide in this video and it's a perfect beginner's tool for dovetails. It uses a magnet to keep your saw at the correct angle and basically makes cutting dovetails pretty foolproof. This isn't a sponsorship or anything, it's just a pretty cool little gadget. In this project, I'm cutting my tails first. So I set the guide on the side sawed to the baseline and then turned the board around and did the other side. So I'm left-handed, so I had my saw on the left side of the guide, and I also made sure not to go past my baseline, especially on the outside face of the board since that'll be visible in the final project. Next, I removed the majority of the waste with a coping saw or fret saw, and I made sure to stay proud of my baseline. So for the waste on the sides, I turned the board on edge, used a chisel to form a small groove, and then used a saw to cut away the waste. With most of the waste removed, I then chiseled to the baseline, going halfway through, then flipping the board. This is important, otherwise you can get blowout on the opposite side. I also slightly undercut the inside of the dovetail, meaning I had the chisels at a slight angle towards the center of the board, since this can help with dovetails fitting later on. I cleaned up any areas that didn't get chiseled out, then traced the tails onto the adjoining side using a marking knife. I traced the lines with a pencil to make them more visible and also used the marking gauge to establish a baseline. On this round of cuts, I used the opposite side of the dovetail guide, and this allowed me to match the angles of the tails here on the pin board. Once again, I made my cuts, flipped the board, then made the cuts from the other angle. I also removed the majority of the waste with the fret saw. Here though, is that the sides of the waste area are angled so make sure not to cut into your pins. Once again, I chiseled away the waste in my baseline, but this was a little trickier because of the angled sides. I eventually got it cleaned up and the dovetails fit really snug. They certainly weren't perfect, but they were good enough for a tool tote. All right, I want to take a quick second to talk about the sponsor of this week's video, the John C. Campbell Folk School. So as you might have heard, I spent all last week there taking a woodworking class. We built a beautiful arts and crafts style bookcase, and I had a ton of fun. It's basically like summer camp for adults. It's an awesome school. They have classes on blacksmithing, woodworking, art, clay. I mean, you name it, they have classes on it. Uh, just a super interesting place. It's located in Brasstown, North Carolina. So it's only about two hours from Atlanta, Knoxville, Asheville, very simple 
centrally located in the southeast and really easy to get to. So if you want to learn more about the classes they offer, check out their website at folkschool.org, and I'll also have a link in the video description below. All right, let's get back to the project. Next, I laid out the exact shape I wanted for the sides where the handle connects. I used a few random round objects to get some nice rounded edges, and then cut the waste away on the bandsaw. I had a resaw blade installed, so I had to make quite a few small cuts to get into the curves, but I eventually got it nice and cleaned up. I also drilled a one inch hole using a Forstner bit at the drill press, and this is where the handle will attach. Next, I refined the curves using a few different spoke shaves, a round file, and some sandpaper. And these spoke shaves from H&T Gordon are just so much fun. And it also really helps to chamfer these outside edges before filing to help prevent blowout. With the sides shaped, I separated them and then sanded all of the inside surfaces of the tool tote up to 120 grit and then glued the sides together. Since this was my first time gluing together a box with dovetailed corners, it took a little trial and error to get the order of assembly right, but I eventually got everything clamped up. Next, I cut the bottom to size from quarter inch Luon plywood and glued and brad nailed it on. If you have any question about the strength of glued on bottoms, go watch Matthias Wandel's video on strength testing glued on drawer bottoms. I flushed up the bottom to the sides with a block plane and also chamfered the bottom edges while I was at it. Next, I glued in the handle, which is just a one inch hardwood dowel, poplar in my case, that I got at the home center. With the structure of the tool tote finished, it was time to work on the organization inside the tool tote. So first I cut some of the scrap maple to make a chisel rack, and I just cut strips of quarter inch plywood to serve as dividers, and just played with spacing until the chisels I wanted to bring with me fit nicely, and the handles didn't bang into each other. You can see here how the chisel rack will be attached to the outside of the tool tote, and I just glued and brad nailed it onto the side of the tool tote. Next, I cut some more strips of quarter inch plywood to serve as dividers for the hand planes inside the tool tote. I added a little glue, then set the plane on top to provide clamping pressure. Off camera, I also created a few pieces to hold my dovetail and crosscut saws by cutting a few blocks of wood and adding a kerf on the table saw. I also created a hanger for my marking gauge from a few pieces of scrap maple. For finish, I sprayed on a coat of shellac, let that dry for about an hour, and then added three coats of spray polyurethane. Now, I'm a total beginner with dovetails, and there is tons more info out there on cutting dovetails by hand if you want to get more into it. I'll leave a couple links in the video description, but I'd highly recommend Paul Sellers, James Wright from Wood by Wright, and Shannon Rogers from the Hand Tool School and Renaissance Woodworker. All three of them are huge resources for hand tool woodworking if that's something you want to get more into. All right, hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. This was a fun project, definitely quite a learning experience. Uh, dovetails are a lot harder than they look. There's a lot that can go wrong. Uh, you know, if you cut on the wrong side of your lines, uh, if there's just a little bit of wood in any of the little corners, it can all kind of prevent the dovetails from coming together nicely. So um, I have a lot of respect for guys who can do this uh, consistently and accurately, and, and I hope to get there one day. So I want to talk about a few of the things I didn't kind of show on camera. Um, one, you might notice these little plywood supports here. So uh, these sides here, they are, the grain is running in this direction. So I knew that might be an issue uh, because that's obviously the direction in which the grain is the weakest. It, it's going to tend to break along its grain. And with the wood so narrow up here towards the handle, I kind of figured that might happen. So it did happen, but I was able to glue it back together and I just added some little pieces of plywood to reinforce this. If I were going to build this again, I actually might build the whole thing out of plywood because then I could still get the kind of thin walls, but also a lot more strength that, you know, something like half inch plywood would be much stronger really than a half inch thick hardwood uh, because of the opposing grain direction. I also wanted to show just some of the tools that I could fit in here. Obviously I've got five chisels. I have a quarter inch up through three quarters of an inch. I brought two saws. Uh, these are the Veritas saws. This is their dovetail saw. I also brought their crosscut saw, which is awesome. Um, I brought a couple of planes. I brought my Veritas low angle jack plane, 
which is one of my all-time favorite planes. I'm afraid this is gonna tip off, but <laughs> I don't think it is. Yeah, uh, the low angle jack plane. Also br brought this old Stanley number four, I believe, or four and a half, I can never remember. Um, I kind of have this set up as a smoothing plane. I also brought my H&T Gordon block plane, which I'm sure you've seen me use in some of my videos. Also brought a marking knife, a glue spreader, and a burnisher for my card scraper. I also brought a card scraper. Here on the side, I have a little hanger for my marking gauge, which is kind of perfect to have it right there. And then last, I brought a little mallet. So that served me really well. I used pretty much all of these tools this week, I think, besides the divider. Very useful to have all of these tools with you. Uh, so if you're gonna be taking any sort of class or going over to a friend shop or anything like that where you wanna bring some hand tools, this was kind of a good, kind of the bare essentials. Um, I did also bring a combination square, which kind of just sits down in here, uh, which is obviously super useful. All right, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this project. If you don't already, maybe consider getting subscribed. I put out new project videos like this every Tuesday. Also, I have links to all the tools I use in this project down in the video description below. And last, if you wanna support me a little further, check me out on Patreon. It helps quite a bit, and you got some cool goodies over there that you can get access to. So thanks again for watching, guys, and until next time, happy building.